Welcome to Transform Now, the podcast brought to you by robotic process automation pioneer, SSNC Blue Prism. Digital transformation has the potential to reshape the way companies service their customers, engage their employees, and manage their operations. Whether you're looking to develop strategies, tactics, or best practices to positively impact the future of work, or you're curious to see how other companies have successfully navigated their digital transformation programs, then this podcast is for you. We're here to help you transform now. Hello, everyone. I'm Brad Hairston with SSNC Blue Prism. Welcome to the Transform Now podcast. Today, I'm thrilled to have as my guest, Susie Dack, Senior Director of IT Business Applications at Banner Health, a leading healthcare provider in the U.S. and a Blue Prism customer. Susie and I will be talking about Banner Health's automation journey and the lessons she has learned along the way. Susie, welcome. Why don't you start us off with an introduction? Thanks, Brad. Again, my name is Susie Daft. I'm a senior director here for IT business applications at Banner Health. I've got probably 20 plus years of experience in the healthcare industry, and my background really truly has been primarily in the revenue cycle space. I was running the business office here at Banner for several years, and Flipped over to the IT side when they asked to come over and bring some operational experiences to help them facilitate some of the IT applications that we brought to fruition. Lately, in the last several years, I actually have stumbled upon the intelligent automation space and have just been focusing my time in that and really growing that for the Banner Health side. And if you don't mind, I'd love to know more about how you specifically got into the automation piece. I think there's probably a story behind that. There definitely is. We, we really did just stumble upon it. We were looking to actually solve a problem here at Banner. One of the other areas that I have is the EMR archiving. And mm -hmm. when we acquire new facilities or clinics within the Banner system, sometimes they come with an EHR, sometimes they don't. We've been asked to take those EHRs and archive them into a central repository system that Banner uses for release of information. Mm -hmm. So as you can imagine, that's a pretty daunting task. We have many, many in the backlog to actually do, and we really wanted to expedite that process. So one of the solutions was, well, we, we can't gain access into the system the way that we would normally do it. So mm -hmm. we decided to leverage robotics process automation. And we utilize that in every single one of our archiving processes. And we bring it into our central repository system to make sure that all of that information is available for our HIMSS department for release of information. That's really where our journey started with intelligent yeah. automation. It really was just to solve the problem at Banner. That makes sense. Well, it's great to have you here, Susie. And for those that are not familiar with your organization, Banner Health, could you just provide a little background? I think that would be really helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Banner Health is a pretty large organization centrally based in Phoenix, Arizona. We have approximately 36 acute and critical access hospitals system-wide. We are across, I'm going to say, at least six states, California, Nevada, Arizona, Colorado, Nebraska, and Wyoming. We run around three separate corporate offices located in various places. And we also have about 50 urgent care facilities and about 487 ambulatory clinics. Outstanding. Well, let's talk about intelligent automation and, and just how you have built out your team there at Banner Health. Could you expand on that a bit? Yeah. So when we started, it really was a, a SQL developer of mine that I pulled in to help out with the EMR archiving. Since then, we've really expanded not only our capabilities within the intelligent automation space, but also our staff as well. We started to venture into other areas. With my background in revenue cycle, we hit that one pretty hard to try to make sure that we were capturing as much revenue cycle automation as possible. We've expanded by bringing in folks that are already part of the Banner system that have worked in the Banner system for many, many years. Some of them have come to us with director level positions. They've migrated into my department because they're so interested in the technology. But we've really tried to bring in a skill set that is in an area that we want to expand in. So I have 
a couple of revenue cycle folks that are business analysts in that space. I have one that is from the insurance division space, so she knows their operations quite well. Mm -hmm. I have another one that has a business background. So if we want to venture into anything in the finance space, or also she has a revenue cycle background, so we can really utilize her skill set in any of those areas. We also have a clinician who works for us as well, who has really kind of jump-started a lot of our automation in the clinical spaces. We're very thoughtful when we get into the clinical spaces, but he's really he's really ventured and opened up a, a whole new world for us. So we're pretty excited about it. We definitely are accustomed to individuals who know how to navigate Banner already. As you can mm -hmm. tell from the size that Banner is, it internally, sometimes it can be difficult to navigate in IT. So right. we brought folks in that actually have that type of background that can solve the problem quickly because they know who to go to get things done. Yeah, I love that you have these business consultants in your team that come to you with that process expertise. That's often one of the biggest struggles for automation teams is they lose that connectivity with the business and, and really understanding how they operate, you know, what the process issues really are. So that is really, really incredible that you guys are doing that. Susie, I understand that you also have created an internship program for college students to get hands-on experience with automation and possibly even become future hires for your program. So can you talk about that? Yeah. So as the industry is all hot and heavy with hiring any developers in this space, it's a new technology, so they're not exactly the easiest to come by. One of the things that we have really tried to do here at Banner is embrace those students that are coming out of college and mentor them. We have lots of mentoring programs here at Banner, and this is just one of them. We bring them in as they're close to graduating and they work for us. We've got a couple of them right now. They've been working for us. One is, is coming upon a year and one will be coming upon a year at the end of December. And our goal really is, is let's teach them the entry into the intelligent automation space. So mm -hmm. we have one that's actually developing in power apps. And then we have another one that's actually learning a lot more of the operations because he is in a controller space. So he is managing our day-to-day -day operations of the bots that are actually in production. So it's really been super beneficial for us. And what we're trying to do is as they get close to their graduation date, we're trying to make it so that they can just transition into the department because, again, we've already invested in them that full mm -hmm. year. So they fit really nicely because they already have the knowledge. They already have the contacts. And it's a really great opportunity for them and also for us. And one thing to remember is that even if they come into the intelligent automation space, our goal is obviously to keep them there. But yeah. if, if that's not of interest to them once they graduate, we don't want to see them leave Banner community. We want them to stay inside of our four walls. We want them to continue to progress. Right. And if they want to go into like information security or mm -hmm. any other area inside of Banner, it's still beneficial for us that we get to keep them there. So we're, we're super excited mm -hmm. about the program. It's working really well. And we've actually expanded on that a little bit and had a couple of high school interns as well. That is brilliant. And even if they don't stay with your program, I mean, that's incredible that they're taking kind of an automation mindset into the roles that they go and, and fill. So yeah. there's, there's benefits from that as well. So that's really tremendous. Well, Susie, every time you launch a process automation, I've heard that you do a birth announcement for, <laughs> for the bot to give it good publicity across the organization. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah. Sure, we, we do. It actually kind of started because all about intelligent automation is about educating your community that you're working with or your customers that you're working with. And it's such a new industry that not everybody totally understands it. So when we do bring a bot to production, we certainly want to make sure that our customers are aware that it's in production. We want to make sure that our senior leaders at an executive mm -hmm. level are aware. We also want to make sure that they understand the benefits of what we're doing inside of Banner. And that's really where it kind of came in is we wanted to showcase the bots and we wanted to showcase the value add that we're bringing to our organization. 
my team was the original ones that started to name the bots just because we were working in them. Mm -hmm. But once we started getting our customers involved in that, the development and the testing and all that kind of stuff, they really started to understand that, oh my gosh, do we get to name a bot? And <laughs> we now bring the customers in to help us with any naming of a bot if they want to. Love it. Yeah. The other thing that's really valuable is that we also recognize those customers on the bot bill because we cannot do this without them. So a lot of our work is done in the customer service area. We're building relationships with departments so they mm -hmm. trust us and that yeah. we continue to build automation for them. And so we recognize every single one of them that are involved in that build. And we just make sure that those who were part of it get credit for what they've done. So that's, that's really what we do with it. And then yeah. once we send it off to our senior leaders, it also gets published in a weekly CIO publication that goes out. Mm -hmm. uh, so everybody in IT sees exactly every bot that we actually build and the value that it's bringing to the organization. Ooh, that is great. And you mentioned senior leadership there a few times. Could you just expand on that a little bit? Because that's also another challenge that a lot of automation programs have is just being on the radar with the executives. Yeah, we are very fortunate here at Banner. Our senior leaders are very in tune. They're very aware and they're very supportive of what we are doing for the organization. A again, that is a key piece of making all of this successful. You can stand up, you know, anything that you want in intelligent automation, but if you don't have that senior leadership support, it can sometimes get stipend. So we, we here are very fortunate. We have that support. We have that acknowledgement and recognition from them. They're often coming to us with, hey, can you tell us the bots that you've built within the last 30 days? And, you know, that information then wow. will go up through us, you know, a, a leadership meeting and that's presented. So we we definitely have eyes on us for sure, but mm -hmm. uh, it's it's always a good thing because they're very eager to help us continue to grow. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So Susie, I know your team has added several intelligent skills to your digital workers to make them more capable and able to automate more and more complex things in your environment. Revenue cycle is complicated enough, but which of the intelligent skills that you've added would you say have, have been the most impactful? I would have to say our IDP space, the intelligent okay. document processing. We transitioned a lot of our incoming faxes that come in from various locations, external to banner, and we are processing a significant amount of those so that our end users are not actually having to open the documents up, figure out what they are, and transition them to the appropriate place. We continue to expand in this space. One of the first things that we just did was we would open up the document and rename it. And as little as that sounds, it saves a significant amount of time for our front office staff. And, and I'm primarily in the ambulatory space. Mm -hmm. So we search the document for a patient's name and we rename it if we can find it. If we can't find it, then it goes to an exception for, for at that point, now our staff is working by exception versus mm -hmm. totality. So it does really make an impact, just the little phases that you go through with it. Now we've taken that a step further and we're trying to figure out, okay, so with these documents, what type of document is it? So then that's one less thing that our front staff have to actually acknowledge. And now I don't have to name the document and I don't have to figure out what it is. I can just route it. So it's really been beneficial and the little wins with each one of those that we do, it really does impact the end users. It's quality for the employees as well as quality for our data. So we're, we're super excited about that space. Okay. Well, Susie, you shared a story at the very beginning of our podcast about EMR record migration and how that kind of kickstarted your automation journey. Are there some other stories you could share that you love to talk about that demonstrate the power of automation in your environment? Absolutely. So again, this is one of the first several bots that we had actually built. Our pharmacy team came to us and said, hey, can you help us out with our 340B program? And, and so we, we got into it with them and we started digging into the processes that they were going through. And our developer really came up with a cool way of doing this. And, and what this particular bot does is it's actually called B2D2, believe it or not. 
It, it researches prescription orders that have been denied from the 340B program and finds the data needed to validate these scripts. So we're actually going back into the documentation to say, okay, wait a second, this script really was valid and here's the information for it. And then that way we go ahead and reprocess that so that we can capture that revenue forward banner. We don't want to lose out on that. So we definitely have been very successful in this space. And, and that's one of our early on successes with our bot build. Since then, we've obviously had more, but um, that was really an early on one that thrived pretty quickly. That's a great story. Yeah, we actually have a couple of them that we've been pretty impressed with. I mean, we're, we're continuing to expand on it. You know, when you go into any project, you obviously, it's always a lessons learned at the end of them. But mm -hmm. what we've been doing with those lessons learned is we've really been trying to, okay, what can we do better? Like we thought it would be this way, but it ended up being a different way. What can we do better? And we continue to just like expand on that and make these processes even better. One of the ones that we just brought to production was Rosie the referraler. I know, believe it or not, <laughs> our, and our customers help name this one. It actually is taking referrals that have been faxed into Banner and it's taking the information off of that and it is loading it into our EMR system so that our referral team can actually work those referrals. And again, we're using RPA, we're using mm -hmm. IDP in all of those spaces to make this work. And, and the team, actually, we did some fine tuning with it. And they are now seeing about 75% of all their referrals automate into the system for this particular pilot site that we've done. We are super happy with those results. We are going to be expanding that into all areas slowly with all mm -hmm. of our other sites. So that that's a real big success. That's story outstanding. Yeah, yeah, that's great. We did another one that was super cool with our referrals in the imaging space. We are actually reading some of those that are coming in and we are populating them into an HL7 record. And we are turning around and ingesting those into our imaging, our Fuji imaging system so that those can be worked as well. So mm -hmm. we continue to expand on those. We've only done one or two formats with that, but we are yep. continuing to build on that so that it eliminates all that front end work that our staff is having to do with referrals. I have a feeling if we talked another 30 minutes, you could give me 10 more stories <laughs> just like that. So thank you for sharing the ones you did. Those are great. So tell me how you measure and communicate automation benefits at Banner Health. I would love to know about that. The benefits realization piece is so critical to keeping a program going and really showing the value to, to everyone in the organization. So could you expand on that? Yeah. So early on, we knew that we were going to have to actually monitor our return on investment. Sometimes you build a bot and... Maybe for six months or a year, it's going to produce and then changes happen within your organization. So you no longer need it. It's just inevitable. Mm -hmm. So what we tried to do is we really tried to monitor these and we do it on a daily basis. Our bots actually will calculate records touched, hours saved, whatever it might be within the process so that we can pull it into a SQL database. And that's mm -hmm. exactly how we are measuring every single time a bot runs. It calculates exactly what it did. Um, hmm. It's a daily update. Every single time it runs, it updates our SQL database. And we have real-time stats, if you will, that mm -hmm. can actually reflect our return on investment. And, and sometimes keep in mind that, you know, we build a bot maybe to avoid risk. So there's really no maybe dollar amount or there's right. really not hours saved. It's, it's maybe to avoid risk or something. Um, mm -hmm. Or maybe it's physician satisfaction. Hmm. Those are non-tangible things that you sometimes can't put a dollar amount to. And, right. and we still try to record that so that people can see that. Before we build a bot, we actually go through a grading of the process. Like how many records is it touching? How many FTE hours is it saving? How much revenue is it capturing? And just depending upon what we're building, we'll look at those factors. And then that determines really, is this bot worthy is really the way that mm. we look. At it. Is this worthy of building any automation around? If it is, great. We continue to move it forward. If it isn't, then we sit down with the customers and explain to them exactly why we don't feel like it, it's worthy of moving forward so that they have mm -hmm. that understanding as well, because we want them to continue to bring us processes 
even if we maybe don't build everything for them, we still want them to come to us with that education. That makes so much sense. Well, Susie, you have a great and very capable team there managing automation at Banner Health, but I also know that you've augmented that team with a Blue Prism implementation partner. Can you talk about that and how important that has been to your success? We do have an existing relationship with a partner of Blue Prisms, and we are very fortunate to have them. I'll be honest, we we tried a few before, and we felt like we had a lot of skills already inside of our team. Yep. We mm-hmm. really wanted to bring a partner to the table that honestly would challenge us. And, you mm-hmm. know, I always told Blue Prism, I want somebody that knows more than I do, so, or more than my staff does, so... That's really what we've done is we have brought a, a partner to the table that really does have a wide skill set. They're part of our team. I don't even think of them as a partner, to be quite honest with you. Mm-hmm. They're on our team meetings. They're part of our builds. They're, you know, we troubleshoot with them. They, they've been a great asset to us. And they honestly, they probably have helped us for sure springboard this last year. We got several of them inside of our team and, and we're very mm-hmm. fortunate to have them. That's fantastic. Susie, a lot of great things going on at Banner Health around automation. If you were to just give some basic advice to automation leaders at other organizations who are really trying to scale their program in the most effective manner like you have, what would you say? Yeah, I I can tell you what we didn't do right. We started out very big. The EMR archiving, it was huge. Mm -hmm. It's a success, but it was huge to undertake. So my suggestion would be, you know, the developer and I that were working on that, we kind of stepped back and said, what would we do different? And I presented on this in the past. It's almost like a a crawl, walk, run methodology. Like don't, don't try to boil the ocean right out of the gate. And they're going to want you to, everybody's going to want you to boil the ocean, take things in small steps. Even if you have a large project in front of you that you know needs to come to fruition, Still piece that project out. Can you do a phase one? And then can you build on that and do a phase two? A lot of our successful bot builds is because we have that phased approach. We're not trying to deliver the whole entire process. We're Mm -hmm. delivering pieces of it. So we build on that first piece and then we evaluate, monitor, and then we build on the second piece and evaluate and monitor. And that's really my suggestion is don't don't try to boil the ocean. Really try Mm -hmm. to piecemeal this. And be thoughtful with it because if you go into a customer and you say, I can do this whole entire process from start to finish, yeah. and you're not successful with that whole entire process from start to finish, it's going to eliminate any future projects coming from them. You really want to educate and teach them that you're going to do a piece of it and then add on and then add on. And, and that really is where most of our successful projects have come from is that we have pieced them out in phases. Really good advice, I think, for everyone that's embarking upon an automation program. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Well, Susie, I have one last question for you. I, I understand that that you and, and Banner Health are co-sponsoring an automation conference of sorts, specifically focused on healthcare providers next month. I would love to hear more about that, if you don't mind. Sure. So it's actually Wellstar and Banner. We're just hosting it, but oh, okay. Yeah, we're hosting it. Our our sponsors are really coming from the vendors. They've done an amazing okay. job with helping us out with this. But Wellstar out of I think it's Atlanta. Um, mm-hmm. and and I honestly started kind of a a joint session probably about a year and a half ago, maybe even two years ago, where we would just call each other up and just talk. We would talk with our teams about what processes are you building? What are you using? What technology are you looking at? And it really kind of started from there. And we started a user group from it because we kept getting inquiries from other healthcare organizations saying, hey, we're super interested in what you guys are doing. Can we join your user group? So fast forward, what, almost maybe a year and a half, two years later, the group wanted to get together in person. It's grown quickly. (laughs) We are anticipating about 80 users that will be at the site with both vendors and with healthcare. It is specific to the healthcare industry. 
but we've got vendors and healthcare participants inside of this. We haven't limited it to a specific RPA tool or any vendor. It's really a collaboration across any IDP, any RPA, any AI vendors that are coming in. And we've got two full days of sessions that, again, we couldn't do this without our vendors to help us out with this. We've got many presentations, both vendor presentations and then also specific user presentation. So Wellstar is going to mm. present stuff. Banner is going to present some stuff. We've got others. I think Cleveland Clinic will be here. So we are super excited to get this group together. It's a little daunting to undertake something this large. I can but, imagine. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so I keep telling everybody, everybody has a little grace for us because this is our yeah. first go around. You know, we're going to learn from this, but but we're very excited to see just the collaboration across all these healthcare organizations in this space. I, I don't think it's been done before, but I, yeah. I, I'm not positive either. So, I, I love the way the healthcare industry is always willing to get together and share best practices, share successes. And I, I think other industries could learn <laughs> from you in, in, in a big way. I, they're not quite as good at it, but that really will be a great event. Yeah, we're really excited about it. Well, Susie, thank you so much for being on the podcast. It's been a pleasure talking to you. We love having Banner Health as a customer. You guys are, are a great role model to other organizations, not just in healthcare, across industries, just in the way that you've built out your program, the way you're staying connected to the business, the way you're marketing and, and promoting the successes that you're having all the way up to the leadership team. There's just so many great things going on there at Banner Health. So congratulations on all your successes and really appreciate you being here to share those with us. Great. Thank you so much. We're really excited to see what the next several years brings. Thanks for tuning in to Transform Now. For more insightful discussions on digital transformation and more, check out our podcast channel where you'll find all of our previous episodes. And to make sure you never miss an episode, subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast player. And if you like what you've heard, please leave us a review. For more information about digital transformation and the future of work, check out blueprism.com to learn how SSNC Blueprism's digital workforce is enabling enterprise transformation now.